I'm Nan Geschke, your host of the Los Altos History Show, and we're standing in front of the uh, San Antonio Club, uh, located at 647 San Antonio Road, and I'm here with Don McDonald, a fellow historical commissioner. Uh, Don has done uh, uh, some research on the effect of World War II in Los Altos. He's investigated some uh, some newspapers like the Los Altos Times and the Palo Alto Times, as well as uh, looking at the commentaries from the oral histories that have been done in town. And uh, first of all, Don, uh, what was this San Antonio Club originally used for? Well, originally it was a society, a literary music society, across the street in the, the Carruthers' home. And then in about 1908, they built this. and. Uh, ultimately changed the name to the San Antonio Club and became more of a, of a ladies organization. A women's uh, group. That, that's yeah. right. But what, how, now, how was it used during the war? Well, during the war, it was a, sort of a, at that time, there were very few places where uh, people could gather in Los Altos. This was a gathering place for the uh, hostesses that went out to to uh, dance with the troops who were at uh, Page Mill Road and, and the ones that were over in uh, Moffett Field. So it was uh, kind of a social club then. It was kind of a social club, that's right. And it was used for dances. They would, the men would come here and they would have dances here too. Oh, so it was, so it was a, a, a place where, uh, you know, the people of the town could entertain the, the servicemen who were, who were uh, around here exactly. at that time. Yeah. Now, what was the effect of the war on Los Altos, Don? I mean, we were, we were certainly on the Western Front, but you know what, what you know how how was the town affected? Well, in some ways, it was affected like every place yeah. else in America. We had uh, tremendous shortages, and of course, the, the rationing that went with it. Uh, we also had uh, a lot of um, drives, pond drives, uh, drives for. Uh, newspaper drives, metal, the metal too, drives. Yeah. That's right. All kinds of drives, and then the disruptions of family life. Of course, was common throughout the country. Uh, how the West Coast cities differed was that they feared Japanese air raids, and for that reason, Los Altos, like any other community, had its uh, the civil defense uh -huh. volunteers. There was uh, there were blackouts, and they had to have uh, air raid wardens monitor those. There were airplane spotters, and that's, uh, well, it, there was also a, a set up emergency uh, uh, hospitals. Sammy Kahn was a local yes. pharmacist, and his wife actually set up a 20-bed hospital in part of the uh, Episcopal Church in Los Altos, and they got retired physicians and nurses, and the Boy Scouts got a lot of people involved and actually had drills in case there had been an air raid. So there was a lot of preparedness going on here. Exactly. Yeah, right. Now, uh, Don, I know that we mentioned the Japanese and the fear of the Japanese here. The internment of the Japanese families was uh, was prevalent in, uh, I mean, it was it was across the country, but it affected a lot of families here in the county, didn't it? Yes, there are 4,500 in the county of Santa Clara, and a lot of them were in Los Altos, you know, in the nursery business, and uh, there were over here in North Los Altos, uh, some 
uh, truck gardens, and uh, they, they were all sent away to these relocation camps. And some of them, like the Ferichis, their neighbors uh, protected their interests, and they came back and had a very successful life after that. In other cases, it didn't turn out so well. Yeah, there were know. people who took advantage and exactly. took the land. Yeah. Exactly. Now, were there any um, close by military installations around Los Altos? Yes, there were two. There was an army installation over in Page Mill Road, uh -huh. in Palo Alto, actually <laughs> on Stanford property there. And there were a lot of army troops passed through there. And there was an installation, of course, still is at Moffett Field. Sure. The Navy. And between those two, uh, Los Altos had number of servicemen visit, and this is one of the places that they actually came and were entertained. They had dances here, and uh -huh. uh, they would, would, and the hostesses would go out, junior hostesses, to the USOs at Page Mill or at uh, Moffett Field. The buses would come here and collect them, so uh -huh. it was a, sort of a meeting place. I understood, I understand, too, that um, <clears throat> that people entertain the servicemen in their homes as well. Well, there was a lot of that. A lot yes. of that. And yes. some of the homes actually were made into apartments for oh. servicemen. So there was kind of a war consciousness, oh. probably pervasive across oh, the country. No question of that. Yeah. yeah. Now, Don, were there any um, uh, industries that were affect, uh, that were involved in the war that are, were local here? Yes, the Handy Iron Works over in Sunnyvale was uh, one of the big defense plants in the area, and it took a lot of men from from Los Altos, so over there worked work during the war, women too. And then the uh, Permanente plants, yes, uh, Metals Corporation, they also took a lot of people in both defense uh, related projects. Within the little town of Los Altos at the time, there were uh, two minor uh, establishments. There was the uh, Formway. Over on right. The, uh, yeah. That industry. That way, and then the Blybler Iron Works. Uh, Which they, still exists today. Uh, it still exists yeah. today. It, they uh, they had little uh, contracts, and the uh, Ramsey Garage actually did work for the for the uh, Jeeps out of Moffett Field. So, oh, is that right? You know, so uh, so indirectly we were involved in the, in the war effort. Oh, yes, I should yeah. say. Now, how many uh, casualties were there from the, from actually the town of Los Altos. Do you have any idea? Well, if we're trying to get the exact figures. We do know that at the second year of the war, in December of 43, there had been 181 Los Altos, men and women, in the Army, Navy, uh, WAX, Waves, Coast Guard, Marine Corps, and Merchant Marine. Sure. And at that time, there had been three deaths. We also know that at the end of the war, there were 28 deaths. 28 deaths. So, and I assume that by that time, there were probably five or 600 uh, people from here in the services or in the, in the war effort. Now, I, I know that uh, we're going to go on to uh, Shaw Park from here, and we're going to see uh, the memorial that's, that, that's been erected now uh, for all vet veterans, but it was actually through the the work of uh, two men who were World War II vets who, uh, who really got this whole uh, memorial idea uh, in place. Um, that's a fine tribute then to the servicemen who lost their lives both in that war and other wars. It certainly is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's go on to the park. Let's go. <laughs> Uh, Don and I are uh, in Shell Park now in front of the Cradle of Liberty Memorial that's just been put in place about a year and a half ago. And uh, one of the questions I forgot to ask you, Don, when we were over in front of the San Antonio Club was, you know, what what was Los Altos in those days? Um, was it, and there were no real towns, and what was the population, for example? Well, it was all Los Altos and Los Altos Hills was all one yeah. entity as far as the newspapers went. And we think, I've been told the population was between three and 4,000, but I don't know that for sure. We can and will get better figures on that, but at the moment that's my wor working hypothesis. Right. 
so it, again, this memorial that's behind us, and we're going to get a, a couple of good shots of it for you to see the, 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 the whole of it, was the um, work of uh, two men, uh, Jay Brandon and Bill Henderson, uh, who uh, spearheaded a, a, a drive, actually, to raise the funds you know, for this memorial. And we're going to go be going back to the studio and talking with them about their project and about their also their involvement in the war and uh, uh, what it took, you know, to get this, uh, this statue in place. So uh, we'll see you back in the studio. And thanks, Don, for joining us today. Really appreciated you coming out. My pleasure, Nan. Okay, thanks. <laughs> mm. With us now in the studio are Bill Henderson and Jay Brandon. Welcome. Uh, Jay is a World War II and Korean War veteran. He served in the U.S. Army and Air Force. Jay served in both the United States and Great Britain during World War II. He was among the early pioneers of the Air Force space program. Jay is a retired aerospace manager from Lockheed Martin and has lived in Los Altos for more than 40 years. Bill enlisted in, in the Navy in 1940 and was at Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941. During the attack, his ship, the light cruiser, the USS Helena, was struck by a Japanese torpedo. After repairs, the Helena partici participated in the invasion of the Guadalcanal and many other engagements against the Japanese before being sunk at Kula Gulf in the northern Solomon Islands. Bill is a retired division manager from Pacific Bell and has lived in Los Altos for more than 40 year, years. Again, welcome to the show. We're really ha happy to have you here tonight, both of you. Glad to be here. So, Bill, now tell me, what was the impetus for getting, for this cause of getting a memorial, you know, to veterans in Los Altos? Uh, my wife and I were traveling in uh, the southeast United States by car. And you go through all these small towns down there, and we noticed that there were a lot of memorials to veterans from the Civil War and the World War II and Korea War. And uh, I got thinking, why don't we have one in Los Altos? Sure. So <clears throat> when I got back home, I contacted Jay and talked about it with Jay. And we both agreed it would be a well worthwhile project to have a memorial that recognized the veterans in Los Altos and Los Altos Hills. And uh, from that beginning, uh, uh, we laid a plan uh, as to what we would do, and we contacted a lot of uh, uh, very well-known people to be on our honorary committee. Uh, we started out George Schultz, the former Secretary of State, mm -hmm. was on our committee. Uh, Admiral Stockdale, the Medal of Honor man, uh, uh, Senior prisoner of war in Vietnam was also on our ran committee. Also for the vice presidency. That's right. Mm -hmm. And then Dusty Rhodes, who's a local man, uh, was a young Navy fighter pilot and was shot down by the Japanese and served three years in a prisoner of war camp and came back and became the leader of the U.S. Navy Blue Angels. And then we had a lot of uh, local dignitaries on our uh, <coughs> list. And uh, uh, the idea of the uh, honorary committee list on our stationery uh, leads credibility to the organization and it certainly helped in our fundraising efforts because when people see on our honorary committee citizens of that stature they say if they don't say it they think it something that's being supported by these people must be very worthwhile so uh, that's how the that's how it started then we had to go to the city council so you actually started an association, true? We started the yeah. association. We applied for and received the uh, uh, 501c3, which is a, a non-taxable non charitable organization. Right. And then we uh, had to go to the city council and get their approval because the memorial would eventually be on city property. Mm -hmm. And how did council uh, uh, <clears throat> take to this idea of yours and Jay's? Well, it was, it was interesting, Janet and Ann, that the uh, <clears throat> We, at that time, we didn't have an idea of what the memorial would look like. We, we had a concept of what we wanted. And Jay was our spokesman before the council and outlined what that concept was. And the city council uh, agreed with that and said that they unanimously supported it. 
And that, so that then got us started into the, uh, all the other ramifications of building the memorial, the fundraising and getting the sculptures and, and the advertising and all that. But it was a, that was the very beginning of it. Great. Mm -hmm. So Jay, what was this idea of yours for the memorial that you shared with city council that they were so enthusiastic about? Well, we, uh, we knew from the beginning that this project was going to evolve. Bill and I, although we had many years of experience in business, we'd never run a project of this kind before. So uh, we, uh, we set out to create a, a memorial that would just honor the veterans from Los Altos and Los Altos Hills. But as time went by, we realized that we sh uh, actually should honor veterans from the Revolutionary War onward. Sure. And this should be for people of all races, all creeds, and all genders, and, and that uh, we should honor them for their sacrifices, and that we should not in any way glorify war. So then we said, we must have a concept which uh, speaks to the matter of honor, uh, devotion to duty, service to your country, and for those people who gave everything and gave their lives even for their country. So then uh, with, with that notion in mind, we said our memorial should not have guns, cannon, swords, any of the paraphernalia of war on mm -hmm. the monument. Rather, it should be something which honors people who sacrificed to bring about the peace. And ultimately, we said we want, uh, we want a memorial where that's quiet and uh, where people can go and, and sit and contemplate uh, what happened to their, their comrades or, or what the world should come to. Just a place where people can, can be at ease and be at one with the idea of service. So, Jay, did you have an idea of where that might be in Los Altos? At the beginning, we did not have an idea of where it should be. Uh, what we had was an idea of a place that is uh, safe, a place that is uh, quiet, away from traffic. It should be beautiful, and it should be a place that people would just naturally gravitate to. So. Uh, uh, that was the sort of the set of criteria that we established. We also did not want to rely solely on our own judgment. So we formed a committee, to a, a site selection committee that looked at 14 different locations in the city of Los Altos. And we kept coming back to uh, Shout Park. Mm -hmm. And uh, as we looked at the park, uh, on one occasion we uh, asked uh, Mayor Francis Lapole to look at it with us, we found a, a site off in a corner of the park that was not being used, but it was uh, uh, in a grove of redwoods. And right away we can see, you know, there's something about redwood trees that uh, is just, uh, they're like a cathedral. So we said this is a place of, of serenity, a place that we can uh, put our monument. Right. So the problem then became, uh, how do we get the approval of the city for that location? Right. And um, I know that you had, to, had a process, too, for finding uh, an artist or a sculptor for this. And, you know, just briefly, you know, how, what was the process, Bill? Uh, to start out with, we, we had no idea how to do this. And uh, uh, we contacted the uh, arts director in Palo Alto, because I have a lot of memorials in Palo Alto and statues, and met with him, and he was very helpful. He, he gave us the mailing list of 400 artists across the country and we sent to those 400 a outline of what we wanted the statue to represent and ask them if they wanted to compete and uh, of those 440 uh, wanted to compete and they sent us uh, pictures of their uh, of their previous work and a resume of, uh, mm -hmm. of their education and, and accomplishments and from that 40, uh, we had a committee that selected, the, uh, of the 40, they selected three that they thought we should look at. And all, all Jay and I had was, we, all we had was a last name. We didn't know where the artist was from or what sex they were. We didn't want to know. We wanted this to be a very objective uh, judgment of, of, of who the artist would be. It turned out, uh, each, we asked each of those three to build us a model, an 18-inch model, and we paid them $1,500 each for that. 
and the winner turned out to be Rebecca J. Truman from Los Altos. Isn't that amazing? That was I think wonderful. we should point out that people applied all the way from Martha's Vineyard in, in uh, Massachusetts, oh, I suppose, yes, yes, yes. to San Diego. Yeah. Isn't that Amer mm. it's amazing? Yeah. And it, another amazing thing is that the three finalists, all of them were from California. One was from Sacramento, and one was from San Francisco, and, and of course R.J. here it from Los Altos. Says a lot about the art in this state. It does. But well, I know <laughs> that um, <coughs> there, there was a big fundraising effort, <coughs> and that uh, there <coughs> were uh, some people I know you wanted to mention, Jay, um, <coughs> Bob Grimm and mm -hmm. Bob Simon and Paul Nyberg, I know, helped you, you know, with your fundraising efforts. Uh, um, it, uh, how much money did you, have, did you have to raise? Well, it was very interesting. We, mm. Since we had never done a project of this kind before, uh, Bill and I decided, well, we should raise at least $25,000. Mm -hmm. Then Bill said, but you can't buy a good automobile for that. And uh, we realized that we could not just make up our minds without help. So we decided to go to, to some real experts, as you say. Yeah. Bob Simon, who was a fundraiser for Stanford. Bob Grimm, who was very strong in the History House. And Paul Nyberg uh, from the Town Crier. He's the publisher and owner of the Town Crier. And they advised us to raise at least $100,000. And if you know Paul Nyberg, you know what a great guy he is and what, a, what an optimist he is. <laughs> and he said, well, you won't have any difficulty raising $100,000. And we, we took him at his word. We uh, applied to the Packard Foundation for uh, a grant, and they gave us, I think, $25,000, wasn't it, Bill? Mm -hmm. And we went to other individuals, and uh, ultimately we uh, appealed to the citizens of Los Altos and Los Altos Hills. Over 500 families responded, and uh, in the long run we raised Bill was it over one hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars. Oh, that's marvelous. Mm -hmm. That's really mm -hmm. so. Um, Jay, when was this unveiled? Actually, I, when was, when did the process start, Bill? Uh, uh, when you you and Jay first got together? It, it was in the fall of uh, nineteen ninety-six. Okay, fall ninety-six. And so, when was the statue actually unveiled? Well, it wouldn't be fair to just tell you a date. Yeah. Uh, I must say that we had uh, enormous help from the Los Altos uh, school system from the town crier and from uh, many military organizations and a lot of volunteers from Los Altos. So we put on this uh, program. We had a very grand ceremony <clears throat> on the 4th of July, 1998. And uh, it, uh, Bill and I were worried about whether anyone would show up. It turned out that uh, our estimate was that about 2,000 people did indeed show up, a very enthusiastic group of people who seemed to enjoy every minute of the of the ceremony. And that was a pretty impressive ceremony, wasn't it, Bill? It, it, it was. Uh, I wanted to t tag on to something Jay just mentioned. Uh, he mentioned uh, Paul Nyberg and Bob Simon and Bob Grimm. Another person who was absolutely essential, if he hadn't helped us, we, we wouldn't be here tonight. That's uh, Brian McCarthy, who works for the city and the parks yeah. and recreation yeah. committee. He was a true asset in, in helping get this done. Uh, the ceremony itself uh, took quite a lot of planning. Uh, we wanted it to be spectacular, we wanted it to be memorial, we wanted it to be patriotic, and we wanted it to, to appeal to everybody. Uh, we contacted the uh, California National Guard and they furnished a 36-piece Air Force band. We contacted the Navy and they furnished a color guard. We contacted the Marine Corps down at the Presidio, the language school at the Presidio in Monterey and they furnished the uh, Marine Corps drill team. And it took us Marvelous. with a spectacular <laughs> leader. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and uh, uh, we, had, we had arranged with Bill Perry probably 18 months in advance because we knew he would have a busy schedule. And uh, he told us that if he were available, he would participate. And right up until the last minute, we weren't really not sure whether he was going to be there. That morning of the July the 4th of 1998, he got off a plane from Hawaii at 6 o'clock in the morning and was at our dedication ceremony that very same morning. Isn't that marvelous? I think mm -hmm. we have a short clip uh, from uh, former Secretary Bill, of Defense. it wouldn't be fair not to mention the two Army buglers. Oh, yes. We Don't forget them. Yeah. Yeah, no. <laughs> but I think we have that uh, short clip now of okay. uh, the former Secretary of Defense, uh, William Perry's talk on that day that the uh, memorial was unveiled. So let's roll that clip now. 
please join me in welcoming the Honorable Former Secretary of Defense, Dr. William J. Perry. We are approaching the end of the century, and what a century it has been. A century of triumphs and a century of tragedies. The tragedies included two world wars and a cold war. The world, world wars resulted in the deaths of tens of millions, civilians and soldiers alike. We owe our freedom today to the veterans of those wars, both living and dead. At this time, I would like to ask the veterans of the world wars, the Korean wars, Vietnam War, and Desert Storm to stand for recognition by this audience. Please stand. Jay and Bill, that was quite an impressive ceremony, I know, with the former Secretary of Defense, Perry. And it also must have been a wonderful moment when you unveiled uh, the statue. It, it was, it was, Nan. In fact, uh, the, the, of course, the statue was veiled, as you mentioned. And we had a group of distinguished veterans that were on the honorary unveiling committee. And so we all went over to the statue <clears throat> to unveil it, and they pulled the zipper, and the canvas fell off, and it was absolute silence. There was a mob of people around the statue, and it was absolute silence. And through my mind, in that two or three <laughs> seconds, I thought, my gosh, what, what do they think? And all of a sudden, they burst out in applause. Some people had tears in their eyes, and it was very, very satisfactory. That, was, that must have been an amazing moment. Yes, well, I want to thank both mm. of you, both Jay and Bill, for uh, sharing your, um, your vision uh, of this memorial for the town of Los Altos with us tonight. And uh, it's at a very impressive memorial, and you should be very proud of it. And I, I know that you work very hard, and, and your efforts have really come to fruition. And I really urge all of the viewers who haven't been to Shell Park to see this memorial to please go, because it's really well worth your, your, your time and, and your you. effort. Um, we also want to thank uh, Don McDonald, who was with us at the beginning part of the show, uh, about in, in, the, in the interview at, uh, the, at uh, the San Antonio Club and also in Shell Park. And we want to thank you, our viewers, for uh, watching the Los Altos History Show, and I hope you join us the next time. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.